Hey, I'm Brian Van. I'm Max Van. <laughs> and today we're gonna recap Moto America Super Sport Barber 2024. I want to open this up by saying, who makes fun of the guy that does the majority of the work and pays for everything for your racing? I don't know. That would be you. That would you, be me. You would be that guy. You might want to reconsider your position, and, and bro. Of and of course, I thank you every day, but if you, you had do. a boring you're, son, you you're probably... A yeah, you're, well, you're miles away from boring, that's for sure. Barber Motorsports Park is a, a track that uh, you've ridden multiple times. You had the opportunity to ride the 750 at Barber yeah. in a month or so or whatever, a couple months before. Yeah, March. Yeah, and you, you rode fast there. You did a new PB there, 29.6, mm -hmm. which you're, you're pretty stoked about. Um, you made a lap time prediction before we went. Yeah, yeah, my goal is to do some sort of a 27 for, was this for Barber this weekend, I didn't get there. I did a 28.012 in the time attack and technically qualifying two, and I qualified 16th. Out of um, 49 yeah. people. The grid, right, the signups were so big, they had to divide qualifying mm -hmm. on both Friday and Saturday yeah. into two different groups. On Friday, what they did is they separated it between group A and group B. Group A had the faster riders, mm -hmm. right? And the, the season entry dudes. Um, group B had, you know, some of the one-off racers coming out just to do a round. Group, group A had the Vanimal, we'll say yeah, that. Yeah, he, he made Group A, and I would say that, you know, even that, because this is really hard. Yeah, it's I was really hard. That was an accomplishment. I think being in Group A, and you deserve yeah. to be in it. I wasn't expecting Supersport to be this difficult this year, but I guess I'm going to learn a lot for the next couple of years that I'll be racing for and take those lessons throughout life. And when I'm a track day warrior on my Samurai Power Jixer 750. Sure. Exactly. Blazing everybody. It's going to be great. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so they divided it, mm -hmm. right? And they also made it very clear that, you know, there's so many entrants now that normally what is the qualifying rule? It's 100 and, is it 108%? I think it was like one, 110%, then it was 112. I think this year they brought it down to like 108 just because at Road Atlanta, I think we had 46 or 47 entries. At Barber, we had 49. At Road America, we have 42. Road America's bigger, you know, it's a two minute and 20 second lap time, so it's gonna be crazy. Um, yeah. But it, it's a big track, but for tracks like Barber, 50 people being out on the racetrack, that's, that's like, a lot of, lot of that's people, like asking for a problem if you get where I'm coming from. Because, you know, some of those dudes were out there doing 38s and 41s when we're doing 30s, 29s, and even 27s, you know. So it would have been Big speed discrepancy pretty, and, and pretty that crazy. Be a recipe for disaster Yes. sometimes for sure. So cool, we're, we're in Group A. Um, we started off, uh, your weather was a threat the entire weekend him and i are looking at the forecast heading down and we're like trying to map out how wet we're getting yeah it rained the whole way down on and off in the car too yeah so. no definitely a lot a lot of rain you know mm -hmm. we were very fortunate not one wet lap not one wet lap no mm -mm. twins cup can't say that no yeah yeah de definitely but right. the first first day went well i think i qualified i think it was still like six seven sixteenth overall um and then Q2 came around and the time attack, I made it into the time attack, which is the top 20 riders, and I was stoked about that. Um, I did it, that's when I did my 28 flat. Um, which is, man, so yeah. close to mm -hmm. your goal. Like. Yeah, and then, and then race one came along, you know, got a little shuffle back, made my way through some riders, and I caught up to Jarrett Nassani and some, some fast Colombian, something like that Mexican dude named Alfon, Alfonso, I'm pretty sure, same age as me, r r real good ripper from, from down there and um, rode with them a little bit. Uh, but I remember with a couple laps to go uh, at Barber, so you got the, like the chicane, you have the back straightaway, and then you flick it into this downhill fast left and up the hill fast right going up the tunnel. And as soon as I flicked it over from left to right on like three laps to go, it just gets pitch black. Like it's dark over in that area. I'm like, oh shit. So are we gonna expect some rain? Luckily we didn't. Superbike race came along, which is pretty cool. All and, dry. And you can see the storm rolling in. Oh yeah. And with like 10 laps to go, 
man, like I remember at Barber in the paddock, for some of you who know, there are different tiers. So there's tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four for like where everybody's pitted at. I, we were pitted in tier one. It was sunshine, warm, hot, like 85 degrees. I went up to tier two and it probably dropped 15 degrees and it was pitch black. And that's when you know. That's when you know the rain's coming, man. Superbike got it in, which was cool. Was some great Superbike racing yep. this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, they got it in and then they had to have the podium. Yeah. Uh, Underneath, under the building, yeah. Like under under where, where, where tech was yeah, when all the bikes the, would go to yeah, park. Yeah, the tech permit. area, the garage area yeah. there at Barber to get out of the elements. Couldn't do it on the actual podium. Kind of maybe a little bummer because Cam Peterson won that. And, yeah. You know, winning a super bike race is pretty badass. Yep. You know, and you know, you don't get your full podium, you still get the win in the trophy, which is cool. But yep. uh, Twins Cup was a full wet race after that. We're mm -hmm. off in the weeds talking about the other classes now, but. Uh, Sweet. That's part of the weekend. You know, you go here and there's just so much to experience mm -hmm. and take in. And as much as you want to show up and, and you always want to win, mm -hmm. like, you know, we're trying to prepare to win and we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to work towards that. You know, we're taking, you know, action to help you get there. Definitely. Right. Got you know, yeah. a pretty solid coach. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, Josh Hayes, I think that's hard to imagine. There's a better riding mm -hmm. coach than him. I think it translates mm -hmm. really well right now too mm -hmm. because you know with a junior cup bike when he was coaching you you ride that one a little bit different than you would ride a, a super sport or yeah. a super bike you know where josh you know he can get right on any of these and well he's already shown it he'll get on any of these bikes and go out there and compete Man. with everybody yeah if, if you know if he if he hopped on my suzuki which he will not because he's a yamaha, he's a yamaha guy i'm sure he'd get on that thing and probably be top five or Probably not first session, but right there. He'd be competing for the win. Be competing for the win, yeah, probably in the first with, race. Without question, competing for the win. And it's mm -hmm. nice to have him, you know, on our side to, mm -hmm. you know, help, help you, mm -hmm. right? And he also has a lot of pointers that, you know, helps guide us too as mm -hmm. a team mm -hmm. to be prepared and, and put you in the best possible position to achieve your goals, mm -hmm. you know? So have you realigned your goals or are your goals the same? I, I need, I want to get a top 10, of course, this okay. year. Top 10 is probably the goal. I, I know that sounds crazy. You know, it might not sound that difficult, but this shit is really hard. Oh my God. Um, you know, I got a lot of great people backing me. Definitely my dad, my parents, my family, Precision Track Days, Two Wheel Dino Works, and all my other sponsors like Showy Helmet House, M4 Exhaust, uh, SBS Brake Pads, Vortex Racing, Driven Racing, all the badass customers from sportbikechecker.com. Man, yeah. I got a, I got a shitload of you guys to thank, so I, I, I appreciate it. I'm trying as hard as I can. I'm having fun. At least my bike looks pretty badass while I'm doing it. So at least I look pretty good too. Biceps are small, but I'm having fun. So. Oh my God, this is what I have to deal with daily. You gotta remember, we work together every yep. day, and we travel to the races yep. together, and we set up together mm -hmm. and tear down together, and yep. it, it's mm -hmm. a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. This experience mm -hmm. has been great, and you know what you need to remember too is like you know when you talk about your your pace. You went from, in, in a year's time, when you were there at Barber Racing, you were on the Ninja 400. Do you remember your lap time last year? I think I did a 35.6 in the race. And that was, uh, that, was that the? That was the fastest time of the weekend. That was the yeah. fastest time of the weekend last year. And this year, you're on a rocket, right? This is a proper team hammer bike. Chris does a great job. Mm -hmm. I do a pretty solid job of taking care of our equipment and doing the maintenance and such to it and you know working with the setup. Mm -hmm. 128 flat. Yeah. I mean, dude. Do it's the fast. math on that. Yeah, I know. That the, is seven yep. point mm -hmm. six seconds faster. Yeah. Than and, what you were going. And, and one year's time. And, and those two seconds to do a twenty-six or a second or a second and a half when you get down to because if you're doing twenty-sixes and low twenty-sevens, that's race winning pace. You know, that's what they did in the race. And I know I can do that. It's just me getting on the stick. Uh, you know, I'm not used to all that power. I'm not used to the slide because you can ask anybody that really rides a four hundred. When the bike's sliding, it's not going to slide. It's going to fucking send you to the moon. You get where I'm coming from. That bike does not like a consistent slide. So I said, I'm, you know, I'm a little afraid with this thing too. I get on the gas and the thing's spinning. I'm like, oh, no, you know what I mean? I don't want to go any farther. I don't want to push any harder. Well, you're trying to, trying to learn step yeah. by step rather than just go out there and just you know, roasting it and uh. sending yourself to the moon because there's really not a lot of benefit in that. I like the approach that you're taking. 
you know, I feel like you're, you're moving forward. I think you rode well at Barber. Mm -hmm. We identified your biggest area of struggle right now on the racetrack. Mm -hmm. You're having a hard time getting by people that are your pace or a little bit, a little bit slower. If they're really close to your pace. Mm -hmm. It makes it tough, yeah, right, yeah. to get by them, and that's something that we're going to try and. Mm -hmm focus on, mm -hmm. and I think Josh is gonna try and help you with that too, Definitely. at Road America, yeah. to try and sort that out, because I do mm -hmm. think, you know, if you could get by the people that are, especially because you're just beginning this journey, you know, yeah. a lot of these dudes that you're racing with, fast guys, great riders, you know, they're deeper into their journey, like multiple seasons of super sport, you just started, you know, so I think our, our hope is that your ceiling is maybe a little higher, mm -hmm. right, because you're just starting out, and it's logical to yeah. imagine that you're probably gonna improve. Definitely. Race results were, were they the same? 15-15, so definitely not where we want to be at. I know if I had some more balls and would pass some people, I probably could be in the top 12, no problem, just you know, with riding with those faster guys, because honestly, to be in those uh, top 12, I need to be like half a second faster consistently a lap, and that's not really difficult. Um, it's just me sacking up and growing a pair and maybe having an, ex an extended gas tank down there to get by these guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, you know, I think that's going to be a couple of things, you know, that's going to come in time and you're the only one that can make that decision when yeah. you're out there. You know, it's easy for me to be like, oh, you should have passed that motherfucker, right? Yeah, that's easy to say when I can't pass him. Yeah. yeah. I'm not getting by those guys. I can't go as fast as you guys were going. You guys are, you know, at your 28, that's your four seconds under my best ever time at Barbara Moore Sports Park. I look at that time and I don't even know how the fuck you're doing it, if I'm being mm -hmm. honest. You know, and you're probably looking at what they do, a 25 7 new track record? 25 7. Are, now, are you thinking? How the fuck you do a 25 7? Are you? Yeah. Isn't it I'm funny kind of how that, yeah. <laughs> And that's what's really unique with this sport is you have all these levels, right? Mm -hmm. All these levels. And the levels are relevant for everybody. If that's your level, you know, that's you're pushing hard to make that happen. And when you see somebody that's several seconds off of that, you know, you could be out there going, how, dude? Yeah. Like, how is this even possible? Yeah. You know, one thing where you, one area where you're really lucky is your hardware's good. Mm -hmm. Bike's good. My yeah, you, this good. bike, you know, Ty Scott could go out and compete on this, right? Yeah, any one of the Suzuki guys, this bike is, it's as good as the, the stuff they're riding. It's the same bike. And thank you very much, Chris, yep. for that. All in all, a good weekend. Yeah. You know, we're going to continue to move forward. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about Road America. I know you like that track. I like Road America. I know my bike's fast. I'll be able to draft. I kind of play that out really well. I have a good tuck. I don't really know how a draft is going to feel going 100 and probably 70 plus miles an hour. So I guess we'll figure that shit out. It's going to be awesome. I'm really excited for that. And um, again, you know, hopefully my gas tank's a little bit deeper or bigger and I'll be able to pass some people, you know. It's all baby steps. That's and I it, think man. what's going to happen is. When, when you get in there in a race condition and you make that first pass on that first person. It's all gonna go away. Yeah, yeah. you know, but still, and it, like I said, it's easy to be from, you know, you know, sitting on the, on the couch, it's easy to go, oh, you should've just passed that guy. Yeah. Man, it's a lot harder when you get in that situation, and mm -hmm. that's another really good rider, you know, and, and it, they're super close to you in speed. I think we're gonna be where we need to be mm -hmm. in Road America. I love going there, the fans there. Track sweet. The new, epic. New, We're going to the Brown Bear. My wife's coming now. She wasn't going to come. We got a house rented down, down there. I don't know what a Brown Bear is. The Brown is. Bear, it's the bar right by the house that we rent. I don't drink. I drink water. So I drink White Claws. And I'll be at the Brown Bear over the weekend. I'll you know, be sleeping over the weekend. Come on out and hang out, man. Yeah, exactly. All right. So that's it. All right. Until Road America. All right. Until Road America. I just broke his hand. Just Boy, so you guys look at this. Know. I'm winning this. Got you. Okay, you can cut it.